Hello, this is Dr. Raglan. Today's lecture is on techniques, strategies, and weapons for hunting giant spiders. Giant spiders appear sparingly in the yellow zones near Fort Pastor and more frequently in orange and red zones farther east in Fairview. Statistics suggest that a giant spider is more formidable than a wraith, although there is reason to argue this point. The giant spider has the same health and damage per hit, but its disturbed speed is significantly faster, the same as its enraged speed. In practical terms, this means that unlike a wraith, which moves in bursts, falling behind and then lunging forward, a giant spider will keep pace with you as you retreat. This creates both an advantage and a disadvantage. Let's look at the disadvantage first. The giant spider's speed makes it difficult, if not impossible, to outrun. If you panic and sprint continuously, you will exhaust your energy long before you kill your target. There are tactics to deal with this, but they require expert execution. Students with good reflexes can time their sprint using it only when the giant spider pauses to strike. This is difficult because of the giant spider's long reach. Fortunately, giant spiders are not good at making right-angle turns. Therefore, dodging at a 90-degree angle can help to avoid a strike. In fact, if you run around a car in a rectangular pattern, it will be much harder for the giant spider to keep up with you. Of course, this tactic works only until aggro shows up, and then you will have to beat a retreat. Another useful tactic is trapping the giant spider between light posts or abandoned cars. As their name implies, giant spiders are large. When they try to follow you through a tight space, they will get stuck. They will get out eventually, but during that time, you can do significant damage to them while you are recharging your energy. If you're lucky, and there's no aggro nearby, you can even switch to a single-shot weapon and save on ammunition. A more drastic option is to use a speed boost, which will enable you to outrun the giant spider without overusing your sprint. With a 35% speed boost, it is possible to kill a giant spider with relatively weak weapons. Speed boost drugs are expensive, so we recommend them only as a last resort. So much for the disadvantage of the giant spider's speed. What is the advantage to you? Because the giant spider tends to stay in your face, you don't need high accuracy weapons to snipe at your target from a distance. This makes the giant spider easier to fight than a wraith because you can effectively use low accuracy grinding weapons with high knockback and firepower. In any boss hunt, we recommend using weapons with enough damage per second to theoretically kill your target in two minutes. Actual kill time is much longer because not every shot hits its mark. The two-minute limit is simply a baseline for selecting weapons likely to kill the giant spider before the giant spider kills you. There are some high-end rifles and pistols that will do the job, but they require expert handling because their slow firing speed does little to impede the giant spider's rapid attack. Chainsaws are a little better with their continuous knockback, but we recommend machine guns and shotguns for students making their first attempt our first demonstration features Nahum Gardner, who despite being a level 83 grad student, has invested few stats in accuracy or endurance. This should mitigate his effectiveness against a giant spider, yet he can hold his own because he is using an AA-12 shotgun. The AA-12 fires three times a second with 10 pellets in each shot. 30 pellets a second gives the AA-12 better knockback than most machine guns. The damage per second is much lower than that of comparable machine guns, just barely enough to qualify for our two-minute time limit, but that doesn't matter when the giant spider can't get close enough to harm you. It may be an exaggeration to say that the AA-12 makes you invulnerable, but barring any foolish errors on your part, you will succeed. Worth noting, unlike other boss zombies in Fairview, the giant spider shows few signs of its imminent demise. This makes it difficult, if not impossible, to pinpoint a time when it is safe to switch from a grinding weapon to a single shot weapon. Consequently, you will probably be using your shotgun or your machine gun until the very end. For this reason, it is also worth noting that shotguns use less ammunition than machine guns and shotgun shells are less expensive than handgun and rifle ammo. Therefore, hunting a giant spider with a shotgun is less likely to bankrupt starving students. Next, we see Yuki-08 using a K-50M submachine gun. Firing almost 9 times per second, this weapon provides less knockback than the AA-12 shotgun, but it's still enough to slow the giant spider down. The K-50M's higher DPS will kill the giant spider a little faster, so there is less chance of running out of energy and being caught by the spider. 
We recommend submachine guns for hunting giant spiders because they use handgun ammunition, which is generally less expensive than rifle ammunition. Submachine guns are slightly more accurate than heavy machine guns and miniguns, so your chances of hitting your primary target are much better. This makes little difference when the giant spider is inches away, but there are situations in which more accuracy is useful, which we will see in a moment. Before that, I will demonstrate the use of an FM Mitrel heavy machine gun. The FM Mitrel has a faster firing speed than the submachine gun, over 12 rounds per second, so it provides more knockback. It also has higher DPS, enough to kill the giant spider in about a minute and a half. Obviously, the FM Mitrel is superior to the K50M, so why am I not doing a better job of killing the giant spider? Because DPS is not the only consideration when hunting a giant spider, or any other boss for that matter. With its faster firing speed and small ammo capacity, the Mitrail reloads slightly more often than the K50M. I've deliberately impaired my reloading skill to put myself in a situation somewhat analogous to that of an undergraduate student. The result is that there is a slight but noticeable pause every time the Mitrail runs out of ammunition. Consequently, the giant spider is able to strike me once or twice. If it weren't for my armor and endurance, I could be in serious trouble. So in this case, we see that a lower level student with a lesser weapon performed better than I did. This is part of what the scientific minimalist approach teaches us. Sometimes the lesser weapon is the better tool for the job if it suits your skills and stats. Next, we see Taki, a level 67 student, using a Vulcan. This weapon has enough DPS to kill the giant spider in one minute, but more important, it has a huge ammo capacity so that even someone like Taki, who has invested nothing in reloading, can use the weapon without worrying about constant pauses to reload. In addition, the Vulcan offers an incredible amount of knockback. This is due not only to its rapid firing speed, over 12 shots per second, but also to the fact that it splits each bullet in two, thus firing nearly 25 rounds per second. The Vulcan suffers from ultra-low accuracy, which is why we found it somewhat unsuitable for hunting wraiths. As we have pointed out, accuracy is less important when hunting a giant spider. Nevertheless, there are times when it becomes an issue. In this case, Taki has trapped the giant spider between some light posts. This is an excellent opportunity to retreat to a safe distance and inflict as much damage as possible. However, the Vulcan will not reliably hit a target from a distance. This is verified when the aggro arrives. Taki clearly has his sight directly on the giant spider, yet many bullets can be seen striking other zombies. Obviously, this is useful for fending off aggro swarms, but it does waste an opportunity to wound the giant spider when it is in a vulnerable position. Our final video features Taki again. We mentioned above that his reloading skill is virtually non-existent. The reason for this is that his stats have been optimized for close quarter combat. Besides maximum agility, he has maximum strength to wear heavy armor, and he has maximum endurance to survive damage. Here, he pits those skills against a giant spider using a Gore-Tooth chainsaw, the most powerful chainsaw that is not an expensive limited edition or collector's item, though it's still pricey. The Gore-Tooth is more than twice as powerful as the minimum chainsaw we would recommend for use against a giant spider. That would be the grinder, the bare minimum chainsaw. The Gore-Tooth has enough DPS to kill a giant spider in 40 seconds of continuous contact. Of course, it is virtually impossible to maintain continuous contact with a chainsaw. Or is it? Taki certainly does not kill the giant spider in 40 seconds, but his kill time is significantly faster than that seen in our other demonstrations, approximately two minutes. He does this by outmaneuvering the giant spider, exploiting its weakness in order to inflict maximum damage. He gets off to a somewhat shaky start. As you can see, Taki traps the giant spider in a tennis court. There, with minimal interference from other zombies, he focuses his attention on his primary target. At first, he has trouble getting his maneuver right. He's off balance, swinging erratically, and he's using up his energy by sprinting too much. Eventually, he finds his groove, and what follows is truly amazing. He executes a perfect circling maneuver, keeping the Gore-Tooth in continuous contact with the giant spider. Poorly suited to making sharp turns, the giant spider runs non-stop, never pausing to strike. As long as he doesn't trip, Taki is safe. He no longer has to sprint. Before long, the giant spider collapses dead.
Taki has killed it without firing a single shot. The lesson here cannot be emphasized enough. A great weapon is certainly helpful, but only if it's in the hands of someone with the skill to use the weapon effectively.